I might have put this behind me because I didn't want you to see the mess that's behind it. Or it might be my new background. Hello guys, welcome back or welcome if you're new here. If you're new here, my name is Jorge Cortez and this is the DIY talk show. The show where I make things and I talk to you and try to make you laugh even though I usually fail at the process. Okay, I don't know if I've told you this in the past, but I love, love, love reading books. However, since I'm always DIYing, and I keep you not, I'm always DIYing, I'm always busy with a project, I don't really have time to read, but I do love to read. My favorite author is Stephen King, my favorite book is Scary by him, but my favorite book series is The Hunger Games. So since Valentine's Day is approaching, I decided it would be a good idea to start making more of Valentine's Day videos. So today I'm going to show you how to turn your favorite books into gift boxes because this is so amazing that you will be mind blown. These are the boxes that I'm going to show you how to make and they look just like regular cover of the books but on the inside you have gifts which they fall over but it's really awesome for small gifts. So to start off you will need books that you like the cover of it. You can either use paperbacks or the hardcover books that you can remove the covers. So for my covers, I scanned them with the scanner that was on my mom's office. However, if you don't have access to a scanner, what you could do is you could use your phone to take pictures because nowadays most phones come with really decent cameras attached to them. So you can get away with taking really nice photos under really good lighting. So once you have taken photos or scanned your cover, back cover and spine of the book, let's start assemble the box on Photoshop. Start off by opening Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop or if you don't know how to use Photoshop, I'm going to leave in the description last week video where I talk about alternatives to using Photoshop. Next, import your pictures. Once you have them, we are going to start assembling the pictures. So for this step is if you had to scan the cover separately, for example, the paperbacks, you know, you cannot actually just open it and put it on the scan or taking pictures. You actually need to first take the cover, the spine, and then the back cover. So we're going to mush, stick them together. <laughs> but if you got away with scanning the whole thing from the removable sleeve, then I'm going to show you how to work with this later on. I'll start with the cover. Select the cropping tool, but instead of cropping anything, we will give the file more room to work on. Next, import the spine of the book. In this step is where we're going to design if you want a big or a small box. If you want your box very spacious, you would extend the spine to be very wide. And if you want a thin, small box, manipulate the spine to be thin. In my case, I'll make my boxes small. Next, import the back cover and use the front cover as a guide just in case both covers are different sizes. This will make them the same size. Once you have them together, we will create the size of the box, which will tie all together. So if you design to make the spine of the box super wide, you will have to create a square the same size of the width of the spine and then use a transformation tool to make it as tall as a box like this. Then I use a copy of this now rectangle to make the rest of the tabs. Again, if you decided to make the spine of the book really wide, you will only use a rectangle with the big measurements until here and then make other rectangles not as big for the rest of the size of the to be box. In my case, I'll just simply make them all the same size since my box is not going to be too big. I made the size of my boxes kind of the same color of the covers of the book because this will show at the final product. The corners is what's going to hold everything together so they do not necessarily have to be colored. However, if you want to color them, you just want to be sure in case they show, then you can color them, but I decided not to. Once you finish putting everything together, use a cropping tool to crop the excess of the file and save it as a JPEG picture. And make sure it's a high resolution picture so it won't pixelate once it's printed. So for the hardcover books, since it's a solid piece of paper, this is what you should do. Use the selective tool and crop the spine as a separate layer and break up all the pieces so you can manipulate each picture. Then, this is what you would do if you will make your box super big. Next, I'll use Word to arrange my files and print them out. I resize the page to tablet and narrow the edges to use as much space as possible. You don't have to use tablet pages if you don't have them. You can print them on legal size or a normal letter size paper. I decided to go with tablet because I had some access to tablet paper, but if you don't have it, you can just simply print it into letter size paper. So I'll be printing my design onto cardstock tabloid. However, if you don't have access to cardboard, what you could do is just print it on normal computer paper then use some sort of adhesive to stick your paper onto some cardstock. I would recommend you to use spare adhesive. But if you don't have it, you can just use a simple glue stick to stick the paper onto cardstock and then cut everything away. Okay, now it's time to assemble the box. For this process, you will need your printouts, of course, scissors and or craft knife. A bone folder is optional. Glue. For this project, I will use crazy glue since it's dry quickly and is very effective for this kind of projects. A ruler. A few clips. A cutting mat is optional. 
So to start off, I'll be cutting my images with my ruler, my cutting mat, and my X-Acto knife. However, this is optional. If you don't have any of this, you can simply just use scissors because I'm pretty sure every one of you has scissors in their house. So either way, let's just cut away. Once you cut it, this is what you should end up with. So now let's mark the folds of the box so when we fold them, there's going to be very neat and clean folds. To mark the folds, I'm going to give you three different methods. The first one is to use the back of a craft knife that has a smooth round edge and it needs to be smooth and round so it won't damage the paper. The second one is to utilize a bone folder. I got my bone folder as a gift from my sister and I'm pretty sure she got it at Michael's. And the last option is to use the back of your scissors because as I said, pretty much sure everyone has scissors in their house. This might not be completely precise because the scissors can be a little bit bulky, but I mean, it's the easiest. So I'll be marking my folds with the X-Acto knife. So let's just mark the folds. So we're going to make the cuts as I'm showing you here. So now we need to make a few slits to start assembling the box. So to cut the slits, uh, you can either use your scissors or your X-Acto knife. So once you cut, it's time to start folding everything. I'll recommend you to fold both ways, inside and outside, so it's going to be easier to assemble the box. So now we're going to add glue on this part of the to be box. To be box. That sounds like a droid from Star Wars. Okay. I recommend you to glue two tabs at a time. Don't try to rush this process, so please do two tabs at a time. Once you put glue on the tabs, Try to use something to hold the things together. I mean, you could use your fingers, but in my case, I know that crazy glue would dry super quickly, so I'd rather glue to stick on the clip than on my fingers. So leave the middle tabs for the end, since this is what's going to bring everything together. So once everything is glued and together, there might be a little paper on the top of the tabs. This is totally normal because sometimes your design or, and my design might not be super accurate. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my scissors and just trim the exit. And that's pretty much it guys. I love how the box is turned out and I really like that this uh, DIY is super personalized because you can personalize the box with the cover of the book of the person you're giving the gift to and I'm pretty sure they're going to like the box as much as a gift from the inside. And they were super easy to make, weren't they? So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you like it. If you like it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are, I love you. You can follow me on my social media. It will be listed down below. Comment down below any ideas you may have for our future video. Don't forget that I'm currently having a giveaway that I'm going to leave in the description so you can enter and you might win something really awesome. And that's it for today. I see you in the next video. Bye bye, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna let's start assemble. So we're going to make cut. Blah, blah, blah. So let's just mark the balls. Nipple. Nipple.